Hi guys, welcome back and hello if you are new. I hope all of you are keeping very, very well. And I know that I've not uploaded for uh, about two weeks now, but there's a good reason behind this because I really wanted to take the album that I'm reviewing today, um, take time with it essentially. Um, so I wasn't sent an advanced copy of this uh, release, so which is why it's a little bit later. So this week I'm gonna be talking about the biggest metal band on earth, hands down. And out of nowhere, the band announced that they had returned with a amazing single that was Lux Eterna, which roared back to that kill em all era and really had us all raring to go. So with that in mind, I'm diving into the new album now that I've had time to chew on it and churn it. So here's what I thought of 72 Seasons. First off, I have to commend the band with the idea of themes when it comes to this record. 72 Seasons grapples with the fact that we are kind of told by our parents, this is who we are. And as James Hetfield put it so well, much of our adult experience is reenactment or reaction to those experiences we had in childhood. I think this is perhaps James Hetfield's most vulnerable record. It also shines a light, and I think quite importantly, on mental health which, you know, a band of Metallica's magnitude talking about this sort of thing is going to get a lot of people talking, I think. There's a huge amount of honesty on here. And, you know, the idea of looking at mental health, I think, is really grappled with in, um, you know, neglect um, on Chasing Light, which I think was quite autobiographical for James. And then you've also got Room of Mirrors, which I think grapples with the idea of self-esteem. In a Marata tackles, you know, depression, misery is kind of like the main chorus of that song. I think that Metallica have always had this very machismo kind of, you know, strong man sort of feel to them and their music. So to see them basically say, it's okay to have feelings, you know, whatever kind of person you are, you, you can feel and empathize with people. You don't have to be this cold sort of machismo kind of person. I also think that the artwork is absolutely brilliant at delivering this idea of the theme. It's created by David Turner, who has worked with the band for many, many years now. And it's so iconic, the colors, the choice of what has kind of, you know, been blackened in the, in the bedroom, I think was really, really cool. And definitely spoke to me for, for sure when I was kind of like growing up as an adolescent, but it was just so well thought out. So first off, let's address the elephant in the room. This is a big record. It's 77 minutes, 12 tracks long. It's a lot to chew on. And I would say I've probably listened to this about 30 to 40 times, thereabouts, maybe like 35, to really kind of get an idea of what they're trying to express and how it works. And honestly, it's one that just gets better with each listen. So initially, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty bummed out because I thought, you know, the red herring of Lux Eterna, I was like, great, we're back to like kill them all sort of sounding era. And then much of the record is a bit more of a mid-paced sort of thing. But the thing is, is what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in variety. Screaming Suicide and Too Far Gone, for example, definitely keep that speedometer nice and high. And I think there's a real sense of weight to their sound. You know, you've got the title track, 72 Seasons, uh, Shadows Follow, and then Sleepwalk My Life Away as well. They're all really strong tracks that I think really bring that sort of element of Metallica, the sort of weight of Metallica to the forefront. If Darkness Had a Sun, for example, was one that I wasn't initially very sold on, but then it has that sort of the thing that should not be sort of feel about it. And I really like that chromatic riff that's kind of the main part of the song. However, that being said, it's still very cool that the band can kick it up a notch when they want to. Lux Eterna is a fantastic example of that. It's got that new wave of British heavy metal feel about it. But Room of Mirrors, I think, is probably the heaviest song on the album, particularly when Lars gets that double pedal going and they've got that really nice harmony that's happening. It really reminds you of how vital of a sort of like musical influence Metallica have had. Mm -hmm. 
But for me, I think what's so great about this album is the dynamics, and dynamics have always been Metallica's deadliest weapon. Whether it's slides, cymbal grabs, or palm mutes, Metallica are experts at getting from one place to another seamlessly. But I have to say, the star of the show for this album in particular are the riffs. So the band are kind of trying different things, and in particular, Inner Marata, I thought sounded a little bit like a sleep song. You know, it sounds like Sabbath, but via sort of Metallica in a way. And the introduction to Sleepwalk My Life Away with that reminded me of, you know, the 16th note kind of Meshuggahs, the Tesseracts and things like that. So it was cool to see that kind of influence sort of creeping in a little bit before we get to the all that sort of stuff. Not only that though, but I think 72 Seasons has some really, really great choruses. And there's three tracks on here that I think really, really kind of nail that is Chasing Light, Too Far Gone and You Must Burn. You Must Burn in particular, I think is one of the strongest choruses on the album, without a doubt. I would have to say where this record falls short is where guitar solos are concerned. I didn't really have a single one that I was kind of that impressed by, and it was just very Metallica, paint by numbers, wah pedal, you know, the usual kind of stuff. I also think that the length is a double-edged sword. It, there's, it's a lot, you know, it, and it's a lot to chew on, and I think that will definitely put people off the album because it wasn't an immediate listen for me for sure. So I think that's definitely one of its major downsides. But most importantly, I think it was just a little bit bloated. You know, like it maybe didn't need that extra verse or it didn't need that extra run of the chorus or like the intro to the outro kind of section where they play that riff one more time. It could have just been cut from that. And I think we would have had maybe a slightly easier to access record. Where Hardwired went straight for the jugular, 72 Seasons is its more pensive brother. It's more measured in its sentences and has a lot more impact, but like me, it takes a long time to get to the point sometimes. And that I think is really the crux of the album. And so for that reason, I'm gonna give the record a seven and a half out of 10 because it is a great album, but it could have been even better. I've got loads of interviews coming up. I've got Cattle Decapitation, Frozen Soul, The Ocean and Enslaved all coming up so I might not do as many reviews as normal because there's a hell of a lot of stuff I need to get done so bear with me on that but you will get some really cool interviews with all of those bands they're almost like an hour long a lot of them so thanks ever so much for checking this out if you could hit that like and subscribe button that would be amazing if you enjoy this content I've got loads more videos on the way thank you so much for watching and I will see you very very soon